Hey friends, welcome back to my video series in which I build my new pottery studio. If you're new around here, this is the second video in this series. And here's a little look at what the studio looked like before. So, so far what I've done is I've taken down the ugly, horrible fluorescent lamps that were hanging from the ceiling and I also sealed one of the walls that was brand new drywall put in. So let's continue this project. So painting the ceiling was a bit of a controversy over on my Instagram and in the end I just decided I'm going to paint it. Um, the ceilings are extremely low in my studio. So yeah, it's a basement studio and um, not only because I'm going to be working in the studio but also because I'm going to be filming and taking photographs in the studio. Super important for me to have as much light as possible in here. So I did decide to paint the ceilings white. I'll let you know that our whole apartment upstairs has these beautiful ceilings as well and I would never dream to paint those. But I actually thought down here it was the right decision and oh my god it looked so nice in the end. This looks like a branded video but it's not, I promise. Um, uh, this is just like a super cheap, very well known uh, paint brand in Germany. And yeah, it's really affordable um, and you can use it for painting on almost anything. So I painted it on the wooden ceiling, but I also used it to paint the drywall. And once I ripped up all of the loose pieces of wallpaper, I just painted right on top of that wallpaper um, to give it a nice clean look. And oh my God, guys, with the white walls in here, it just feels like a completely different room. There's so much light in here. It's just really, really pretty and clean and comfortable. Um, and that's exactly what I was looking for. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, it's morning here. <laughs> it's like 8 a.m and it's very cold in the studio. <laughs> um, but uh, I have finished painting. I finished painting yesterday. Um, there's still some spots, but I ran out of paint and well, it's fine. It's definitely white enough and um, yeah, it just looks like a studio, so. <laughs> Windows open, that's why it's cold. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna try and install these lights today. I have a trip to the hardware store planned for later today, so I'm gonna see if I need, I'm gonna try and install the lights and uh, see if I need anything. And if I do, then I'm gonna go to the hardware store and pick that up. So hopefully we'll have lights by this evening. So I got these LED lights for the studio. These are the same exact lights I had in my previous studio in Berlin. Um, and I think they're really great because number one, they're really bright. <laughs> And then the main thing is that they're super energy efficient because they're LEDs. One thing you definitely want to look for um, when you're buying lights for your studio is the temperature of the light color. Um, so I wanted one as close to natural sunlight as possible. So what I learned is that you want to look for something that has 600 K. I think this K stands for Kelvin. And anyway, this is, just means the temperature of the light. So this is going to be a lot cooler tone than most like interior lights, um, but it's supposed to be as close to sunlight as possible. And I had the same thing in my old studio and it was pretty darn close, basically as close as artificial lights can be. So uh, yeah, I definitely recommend that just so you can see your colors very clearly. If you plan on taking any pictures or filming like I'm doing, um, you definitely want uh, natural light as possible. So look for that 6,000 K. Disclaimer, I am not an electrician. I don't know anything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know very much about uh, how um, lights work, but um, I do know the basics and I think I know enough to install these. Number one, super, super, super important thing when you are installing lights is turn off your breaker. I'll show you how I do that in a second, but um, let me first show you how this lamp works. Okay, so I had to look at this for a second to understand it, but um, it's pretty straightforward. So over here, the wire should come in. And by wire, I mean the guys that are up on the ceiling right there. They're covered in tape to protect them from the paint, but they should be in your ceiling. And we have two uh, series of wires going off from there. So this one must be the light, right? Because this is the lamp. And this one is actually if you want to make a string of lights. So it brings the wire all the way through to the other end and puts them in this place where you can attach more. Um, we can totally disregard this because I'm just gonna hang them separately. So I'm gonna put the wire from the ceiling through this hole and attaching them 
to these guys. So you need a little screwdriver to go in here. I hope I have one that works. Um, but then it's just matching up colors, right? So we have blue, yellow, and this is usually red or brown. Um, the yellow one is the grounding one. I hope, at least that's how it used to be in Berlin. Yeah, yeah. So look, the red and the brown are the, I don't know which one's, how it works exactly, but one of them brings the electricity in, one of them brings it up, cause, right, because it needs to make a circuit. And then the yellow one is for grounding, whatever that means. But yeah, it's just a matter of putting the wires in here. Okay, so first thing I need to do is install these guys into the ceiling. Um, these are the brackets that will hold up the lamp. Okay, so here is the um, electricity, the uh, fuse box, and I've switched off to that's uh, the right room. <laughs> um, yeah, so I already switched it off when I took down the old lamps, so I know that this is the right one. Um, if you don't know, like if you have no lamps installed and you're not exactly sure which one it, it is, just you know, use your phone or something to plug it into the wall and see if there's any electricity going on in the outlets, because typically these are, um, room by room. Um, usually there's not a separate one for lights and walls, although sometimes there is. So um, if you're not sure, <laughs> you know, uh, talk to an electrician, talk to someone who knows what they're talking about, but I'm pretty sure that the two is the right one. I always get nervous around electricity though. Okay, so we've already encountered a problem and I need to go to the market. Um, yeah, I didn't think about this, but duh. Um, the Electrical lines in the ceiling are not in the right place. So these guys are like really close to the wall here. I want my light to be more like here, right? And then I do have this extra outlet that I just opened thinking, okay, well, maybe this is the right length for it. But the amount of wire that, in, like I can't pull this wire down at all. And it's just like a little stub, you know, like two centimeters or, an inch um, and it needs to go, you know, 10 centimeters in here. Um, it's just not going to reach. Basically, I need to go to the store for like this much wire. I'm really kicking myself because I had extra wire from the old studio and I was wondering if I should take it and I didn't. Always keep <laughs> extra materials and be a hoarder like I am. Okay, we'll go to the store now. Okay, so I got the wire. And so now I can actually hang the um, lights basically wherever I want. So I'm just gonna try and like center them and hang up the brackets first. And then we're going to attach this to the lamp, hang up the lamp, and then while it's in the air, so I can measure that this is the right length, I'm going to attach it to the electricity. Um, the one thing that I didn't think of until just now is that um, I'm going to have some exposed wires, so I might need to buy like a little thing to just kind of like cap it off and make it look nicer, but um, that's not so urgent. So yeah, let's, let's do this. Okay, so the brackets clip in here, so I just need them to be somewhere along this bit. I actually saved the old screws from the um, old light. Um, the only problem is I'm missing one, so I'm gonna go ahead and try and find either the missing piece on the floor or just in my screw stash. I should have a screw that's more or less the same length. I don't have wire strippers, but this is close enough and this can do the job. And look who's coming to visit. Hello. Hello. Checking things out. Mm -hmm. Hi. We're not so sure about the basement right now.
It's a little cold, a little hard on the feet. We need a spot down here, don't we? <laughs> you know, you're kind of like, go, go, go places. Good girl. Now, sit. Yeah, you can watch. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to peel back this white layer so I can get to the wires. And this is usually where I stab myself. So you can see I just kind of peeled off this layer so I can get into the individual layers. Just cut it off. Yeah. So we got our three wires again here. And now what I need to do is peel off the um, plastic around the wire without cutting the copper wire. And this is where your wire strippers should come into play. But I'm just going to really carefully... See? There's only one. <laughs> so, repeat. I'm going to attach this in to the lamp. Close her up. super easy. Okay, so now the job is to make this go here. And I'm wondering, because it's not fully lined up, if I go a little bit out and then straight across. So I had this in Berlin, this was part of my kitchen. Just, it's like, just like a little ceramic. Um, I don't know what it's called, but you know what it is, <laughs> right? So typically a lamp would hang out this way, but it does have these notches on the side, which allow wires to come in. And it can just be like a nice little cap uh, to finish this off. And these wires can probably get tucked up in side of it. So to connect the wires, I have this little guy, just like the one that was on the lamp um, that was fixed inside. I've got another one to connect these wires. So now it's just about stripping back the wire casing again to expose the copper and sticking it in. So this is the moment where it's extremely important that your breaker is turned off. I absolutely hate this part. <laughs> it's just so, it's so fiddly and also so fragile. And also you have to hold your hands up in the air for a really long time. And I mean, I'm speeding this all up, but it took me a good 20 minutes or a half hour to get these things properly attached. Um, so please don't get discouraged. Um, it'll be all right. Just make sure that everything is very well attached so you have a good connection to your lamp. 
I'm just not sure that there's enough space in this cover. Oh, it's getting pretty small. Oh, yeah. That fits. <laughs> so cool. Okay. I need screws. So these screws are a little bit longer than the ones I was using before, but there's a lot of space that this cover is taking up, so I'm not worried about it. I mean, it's not super tight, but I don't want to screw it too hard because I don't want to crack the ceramic. I think it's good enough. I think that looks cute. And I don't even mind the little bits of metal. I think it looks quite nice. Okay. That's going to be it for this video. I think I'm not going to bore you with putting up a second lamp, but what I am going to do is put up a second lamp over here and maybe I can get another one of those ceramic uh, covers. Although, well, we'll see, we'll see what, what it needs, but it's really nice to have light in here, um, at least one lamp. So yeah, that's it for this video. Um, I hope that that was interesting to you. I have no idea. Um, this is like totally not pottery related, but um, we're going to get to the actual building of the inside of the studio eventually um, where I'm going to be building tables and wedging spaces and stuff like that. So um, if the actual construction part is not interesting to you, I hope that that will be. So for other updates about me and my studio and my life, uh, you can find that over on Instagram at Pottery to the People. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Video. <laughs> Bye, friends. Look at all of this hardware that they gave to us and we never used. So I don't know about you, but I always save all of this. Well, maybe not this, this is pretty specific. I don't know about these, but I always save these things because you know, they're good. They don't belong in the trash. I'm sure I can use them for something.